Today is August 17th, 2022. Tonight the target in the sky is Saturn. Every 378 days, Saturn reaches opposition from the Sun, which positions the Earth between the Sun and Saturn, and that also happens to be when the Earth and Saturn are closest to each other. Another way to think about it is that in the sphere that is our night sky, when the Sun is setting, Saturn will be rising at the same time. This results in Saturn being visible throughout the entirety of the night, and with being close to Saturn at this time, that also results in Saturn being the brightest that it will be in the sky. Saturn's opposition was on August 14th, three days ago, but it is still plenty bright and big in the sky. So in terms of equipment, we'll stick with the Skywatcher mount. The telescope is going to be the Celestron 6SE again. However, the camera this time is going to be the DSLR, the Canon 600D, okay so for the camera we've got a T-ring which um, attaches the Canon lens mount to a T2 thread and then there's a the Barlow lens which doubles the magnification of the image which is very helpful when imaging the planets, which are very small. And this just threads right into that. I can simply slide it way in. And now it's nice and secure. We powered the DSLR with this battery cable thing. It's basically just a dummy battery that you can plug power into. And then up at the back of the telescope, off of the two inch visual back adapter, we have a um, two inch to one and a quarter inch adapter. This is the laser pointer that we have attached to the telescope. It's a very powerful green laser beam. Right now I'm trying to align it to the scope and on the computer screen, we can see the laser. So that means that it is perfectly aligned. set up in the field right now. Um, unfortunately, we waited a bit too long, so now it's dark and hard to film. Here is the setup. So we're just gonna get polar aligned real quick, and then it should just be point the laser at Saturn as soon as it arises, and then start tracking, and then after that we can get to imaging it. Using the laser pointer on the scope, I pointed it at the bright star Vega. It's always a relief to see something other than darkness when I turn on the camera's live view. Right now I'm collimating and focusing the telescope. Now I'll use the laser pointer again to point the telescope at Saturn. And then I can lock it in place and turn on the mount's tracking to keep Saturn in the center of the field of view. I also zoom in the camera live view by five times. So right now we are looking at Saturn. I'm just waiting for Saturn to get a little higher in the sky so that we are looking through less atmosphere, which will improve the quality of the picture. So the strategy for taking a picture of a planet is quite different from taking a picture of a galaxy or nebula because with those we're taking long exposures, but with planetary we're actually taking very short exposures. What the computer is actually doing is it's recording the live view from the camera, so it's essentially just recording a video. So the process for taking a picture of a planet is called lucky imaging. The reason it's called lucky imaging is because it's kind of luck based. As you can see on the live view right now, Saturn is quite wobbly, and what that is is the effects of the atmospheric distortion, which is also called the seeing. And so when we take thousands of pictures, we have the computer go through and analyze the pictures and sort them based on the quality of the image. And then we take maybe the top 20% of the best quality images to then stack together and you throw away the bottom 80%. So you're trying to get lucky and capture as many frames of good scene as you can, and then you throw out all the frames of bad scene. Earlier before I started recording Saturn, I also put in the eyepieces to do some visual observing. It looked even clearer through the eyepiece than through the camera in my opinion.
since I was all set up already, I decided to point the scope over at Jupiter, which was a little bit later after Saturn. I captured 5 minutes of Jupiter, but I probably won't do anything with it. Jupiter's opposition isn't until September 26. The imaging of Saturn is complete. I did about 5 minutes of capturing frames, probably got about um, 10,000 frames total. So I'll see what I can do with that. So here's the picture.